Hello, welcome to the first in a series of four videos on doing a systematic review. These videos are aimed at students, undergraduates and master's students who may be asked to do this type of review for their project. In this first video, we'll be looking at what is a systematic review and how does it differ from a literature review. We will look at finding some examples and also the steps involved in doing a systematic review. A systematic review is a very specific type of literature based study which seeks to bring together the results of existing studies that have been done and often this is to answer a specific question. So in the health arena it may be looking at the impact of a certain intervention on a certain condition in a particular population. Part of doing a systematic review involves developing a detailed protocol which will set the criteria being used for the study. It will also include details about literature searching, so what keywords are going to be used, and a very detailed literature search then takes place to make sure that all relevant studies are identified. The relevant studies are then assessed for inclusion and also for quality. A systematic review in needs very detailed reporting, especially of the literature search methodology, so that somebody could come along and replicate that search. A systematic review will also usually or often include a meta-analysis of the statistics taken from the relevant studies to try and really judge the efficacy of a certain intervention. These videos give you an outline of doing a systematic review, but for more detailed guidance, have a look at our systematic review guide. A systematic review fits in on a scale of literature reviews. So going from the most basic, basic literature review as in the sort that would be done to support a lab based project would be a summary of the literature, maybe searching one or two databases to find that literature. Um, it's used to identify gaps in the current knowledge to drive research. Um, and with this type of literature review, the search strategy does not need to be recorded. The next level of literature review would be a, a critical literature review. This would involve a comprehensive search and a sort of basic search strategy would be recorded in the methods section for a critical literature review. This sort of study can be done by one person and what it's used for is to provide a sort of impartial overview of the current state of the knowledge and it can be used to identify gaps and propose future areas for research. A systematic review also includes a comprehensive search, but it's usually seeking to answer a specific question. Um, it has a very explicit methodology for the search, and this is usually reproduced in the appendix for a systematic review. And it has a protocol which will include inclusion and exclusion criteria. The whole idea of a systematic review is that there is enough information about how it was conducted for it to be reproduced. And professional systematic reviews are usually done by a team to avoid any bias in the evaluation of the literature. This slide just goes into a bit more detail about the difference between a systematic review and a critical literature review, because that's where most confusion comes. Um, so you will need to talk to your supervisor about which type of study you are doing to make sure you're, you're both in agreement on this. Um, so as I said, a systematic review is bringing together the results of existing studies, usually to answer a specific question, whereas a critical literature review is providing a subjective summary of the literature on a topic and also looking to identify gaps in the knowledge. Both will include an extensive search, um, a thorough search of the literature, um, but the uh, systematic review may also include grey literature, so that's things that are not formally published like conference papers, theses, um, websites, reports you found on the web. A systematic review is driven by a detailed protocol uh, which sets out the criteria for the study and that's usually developed um, using a framework. The PICO framework is commonly used. Whereas a critical literature review is guided by just inclusion and exclusion criteria. A systematic review, a professional one, will be done by a team of people to eliminate bias. Um, it can be done by a single person for a project, though. As a critical literature review um, can be done by a single person, uh, but when, when things are done by just one person, they are open to bias, so there is that risk. 
A critical literature review can usually be completed in a shorter time than a systematic review. So systematic review will include creating that detailed protocol, creating a comprehensive search strategy to run across multiple databases, reviewing the results against the eligibility criteria set out in the protocol, then evaluating the relevant studies to make sure they're reliable and interpreting those results to try and come to a conclusion. Um, and then it will also include a reference list and detailed appendices will usually be included which show the search strategies for each database used. Whereas with a critical literature review, the write-up of one of those will include a sort of scene setting introduction. The method section will include the search strategy, details of where you searched. Discussion of themes will be um, included next, and this will be the biggest section, drawing out the, the topics that have come out of the literature and also identifying those gaps of future research. And there will be a conclusion and a long reference list as well. If you're not sure what a systematic review is or how to draw up a protocol for a review, there are a couple of places you can look to find examples. The Prospero database gives systematic review outlines and the example I'll show you in a moment is on the effect of blueberries on cognition and mood. And then the Cochrane library gives you full write-ups of systematic reviews so you can see exactly what goes into writing a professional systematic review and how that is laid out and how the appendices are used to record search strategy. Both Prospero and the Cochrane Library are freely available, so you can just Google them, although they are linked from our systematic review guide. So use Prospero to find examples of protocols for in-progress and completed systematic reviews. Use the search function to find um, review protocols that are similar to your topic. So I'm just searching for blueberries and cognition. This has found me 11 search results. So most of these are ongoing studies. There's one completed one. So I'm just going to have a look at the one at the bottom here. So this is a review on the effect of blueberries on cognition and mood. And if we look at the protocol, it includes details of the, the title, the objectives. They've also listed some of the keywords that they'll be using in their search. Then they've listed databases that they will be searching given an example of their search strategy, talked about study design, and then coming down to the eligibility criteria. This is where the PICO framework comes through. So we've got our population, our intervention, our comparator, and then the outcomes are listed below. So use the protocols on the uh, Prospero database to give you an example of what you should be aiming for when you're designing your own study. To find completed systematic reviews, you can just find these on most databases, but the best quality ones are on the Cochrane Library. So these are produced to very high standards, so they're a great place to look for examples. So once again, you can, you can do a search. So this will find us not only completed um, systematic reviews, it will also give details of trials. Looking at an example on here, so these are fully written up systematic reviews that have been done. You can scroll down or you can use the contents on the right here just to jump to a specific section. The supplementary materials can be very useful when you're planning your search because it will often include the search strategies that we used when looking for information on that topic. So if you can find one that's similar to your own topic, you can look at the keywords they used and that may well give you examples for ones to include in your own study. These are the steps involved in doing a systematic review. The first step is to draw up a protocol using a framework such as PICO to help you come up with a list of inclusion and exclusion criteria to judge the relevance of the results that you're finding. You then need to choose where to search, which databases are going to be relevant for your study. Develop a search strategy that will work on all of those databases and include as many different keywords and alternatives as you can think of, but still being relevant. 
Running and recording your search is the next step. So once you've finalized your search strategy, you run your search on each database and download the results into a reference management system. And the one I'd recommend is Desktop EndNote. And you can then manage your search results in Desktop EndNote. And it can help you with step six, which is evaluating and sifting the results until you're left with hopefully a fairly small number that you're going to concentrate on in your write-up, which is the final step. You can find a lot more help about all of these steps in our systematic review guide shown on the right of the screen. Move on to the next video in this series to look at the first four of those steps. But if you need further support with your review, definitely discuss it with your supervisor. Make sure you're both on the same page when it comes to what type of project you're doing and whether you are actually doing a systematic review. Look at your project handbook, which should be available on Blackboard. Consult our systematic review guide if you are doing that type of study. And if you need more help, especially with your search strategy, choosing places to search and using EndNote, please do contact your academic liaison librarian.